excuse me, my name is Jocelyn Curl. Uh, I work for the city of Richmond. My name is Bailey Waller. I work with the uh, West Nantasa Public Education Fund. Hi, my name is Angelica Carriaga, and I work for a nonprofit organization called College is Real. Um, also, I just want to mention, if you are listening to our translation, it's going to be on channel 4, I believe. So, si necesitan que traduzcan, está en el canal 4. So, during this session, what we would like to do is we'd like to get feedback on the award amount proposed for the scholarship. Right now, we're looking at um, two uh, potential options, but we, um, for your consideration and to help guide the discussion today, that are, that are noted over here. And then also to the right, um, we have some of the feedback we received, not all of it, but some of the feedback we received at the last uh, community meeting on June 8th. Um, and so on one of the, the, so what we wanted to do today specifically was to talk about the award amount, to talk about if UC, University of California and Cal State, private schools, community colleges, what type of award amount do you think would be appropriate? And um, if it should be all flat level, or should there be a scale, like different amounts based on the school that you're going to and the cost of the school. Um, we also wanted to get some feedback regarding, for example, K through 12 education, if you think the person needs to be maybe a return resident for that entire time or for what period of time, and things along those lines. And then also just feel free to give us any comments that you have that you would like to make sure that we take down. Uh, Angie will be scribing. I'm going to try to keep track of whose turn it is to speak, and so we're, I'm going to try to call out and, and keep, keep note of that so we can make sure everyone gets a chance to speak, and Bailey's going to facilitate. So feel free to ask us questions also at any time, uh, if, and as well as we're going throughout the session. Does anyone have any questions before we get started? Yes, ma'am? I guess my first question would be, obviously, schools and private schools, why have they been excluded? Um, yes, I'm sorry. I should have said UC and private schools are um, under option A are proposed at, um, and this is just a starting point to guide the discussion based on the fact that we'll have 30, right now we definitively are going to have $35 million over a 10 year period. And we're hoping obviously that this program will greatly incentivize the number of young people that we have attending college, as well as working with Bailey and looking at for a lot of the young people in our community, what is the gap that they need covered after um, their financial aid uh, packages are put together by the university so that we can help students hopefully graduate closer to having having little little uh, debt. So Bailey, do you want to go ahead and say yeah, so, so just to kind of uh, again emphasize that um, nothing has been decided on, so it's not, there's no exclusions at this point. Right. So I didn't hear mention. Yeah, so this is a, a draft proposal. Uh, that the city council will be the ones that will ultimately approve the, the proposal for the Richmond Promise. Uh, so that's an important one to look at students that are going out of state because we do know that more students are going out of state um, because of some of the challenges with education in California. Yes, ma'am? Well, just because. No, finish your. I will say that. Because of interest. Yep, I'm not sure. Yeah, absolutely. Based on the kind of. Um, for apprenticeship programs and workforce training. So we believe that um, there will be an opportunity for those sorts of programs to be covered. Our employment and training director 
Um, Sal Laka will be uh, the person in the city who helps um, inform and guide some of those conversations. So if you'd like to leave my contact information, if you'd like to leave your contact information with me, I'll be sure to put you in touch with him. Um, but your feedback on this is specifically is welcome. If you think that this $35 million in addition to that $6 million should be applicable for the trades, we can certainly um, note that. But we did specifically describe what are called CTE programs. Um, that we became aware of there's certain certification track programs where we understand now, um, especially given uh, a lot of the funding from the state, the, the, the pipeline, the came 14 pipeline is something that the state is very invested in. And so that there's a strong emphasis on now community colleges providing those sort of vocational trainings and the CTE track. Um, at, a, at a very affordable rate. Okay. And one of the things that some of the other promised communities have uh, really used as a best practice is making sure that we're not getting, um, encouraging kids to go to school, like for-profit colleges, some of them, uh, when kids are leaving with huge amounts of debts, and um, a small uh, you know, scholarship like this isn't going to you know, take debt. So we want to be careful. Um, on those yeah, so, so the, the initial, the $35 million investment, right, the goal is to spread that over uh, the 10 year period of time. So these are not decided on, but looking at the number of students that we have in West Contra Costa, the number that are, are you know, on, on, typically will, will go to college, the number of years in college, we're looking at making sure that the money um, is enough for all of the students that would be eligible. So again, it's not decided, but looking at, okay, we've got currently, we've got this $35 million. How can we ensure that um, it's enough for all of our students? Perhaps the city also considered that maybe with increases in tuition, that the amounts are so small that they wouldn't be an incentive. I mean, a thousand dollars nowadays, you can barely buy books. So, so um, just a follow-up question for you. Um, I would ask, uh, do you, in your mind, were you, did you have an amount in mind that you think would make a, a yeah. more significant impact? Yes, I think that if I were going back to college and I went, um, I, I had no debt because I went to college with a scholarship, five thousand dollars or more. But that would be an incentive for me. Four thousand dollars, two thousand dollars. That would make a thing on the amount of there or me deciding if I'm going back to college, especially if I'm in you know, a class or law class and my parents can help me and I have to work two jobs, that, that doesn't make a difference. I don't know Don's coming in. Okay. Um, did you, Don, did you have your hand up before Mark? As soon as I came in. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No. That's all right. I, I'm just going to ask a favor, everybody. This is a, a small group here we, between the tr BART trains outside, the BART horns, and uh, the interpreter here. We've got outside noises here. Try not to have just a personal conversation with the facilitator. Speak loud enough so that everybody in the room can hear. Keep in mind that sound travels in the direction you point at. So if you're in the front row, the people in the back row may not be able to hear you. I'd appreciate it. Plus, we are recording this and putting it on YouTube, and so the real soft conversations cannot be picked up. Okay. Thank you for your help. Did you have any other? Oh, I got lots of more comments, but let's give people a chance. Um, in the slides that were shown by Mr. Lindsay, you may have noticed that it caught, the co actual cost of going to school is the total cost of going to school minus the cost of the, the amount, amount of money that can be raised and scholarships that are available. And you may have noticed something interesting. One of the most expensive ways to go to school, according to those slides, is the community college, which listed at a cost of 7000 and something per year. Now, why is that? That's because when people go to school, they have all these expenses in terms of books, the tuition, the expenses of transportation, whether they live at home or they have to try to live somewhere near there, and there's very little money available for them. At the same time, community college is actually the way in which most Richmond students actually get to college, either by going there for two years and then moving on to work, or going there for two years and moving on to a four-year school. Now, it seems to me that that means that the people for whom the Promise program is most important, that is the people who wouldn't go to school, but 
are likely to go to school, if we can help them some financially, are going to be mainly looking at community college. In that sense, I say that $1,000 then, when it's going to cost $7,000 a year, is a joke. It's a false promise. We're not really promising kids that they can go to college. We're basically telling them we're going to hold something out here, but when you get there and you actually do the math that you learned in high school, you figure out you can't do it. So I say that if you only have a limited amount of money, that you've got to make the amounts enough so that the people who go to college can actually make it through and actually expect to make it through. You can't ask them to go to community college and find a job to work because when that happens, they're usually, I teach community college, I know, they're at a huge disadvantage. So if you want to make it a promise to people, you got to have enough for the community colleges. If that means that you can't offer the scholarship to everybody, that you have to limit it in some way by a lottery or something else, but let's make it a real promise to the people that we offer it to. Yeah. I, just said, I just want to make sure that we're capturing now, I, your comments. I, I, I've said another thing, I've proposed that that community college thing should be $6,000 and that the other uh, amounts the uh, regular, the other schools should just be honorific amounts, you know, $1,000 each. Okay, so I want to make sure we're getting captured what you're saying. So you're saying increase the, the um, scholarship amount for community college students so that they don't have to work because that um, increases the chance of their success. Well, and it covers and, the real expenses. Right. And to, um, even if it, would, if it would mean that we're limiting the number of students that are receiving this scholarship to increase the dollar amount. And you had mentioned a lottery system, is that what you said? That's one possibility, or you decide it in some other way. I think you should just actually limit it to Contra Costa Community College so that we actually spend the money to increase educational capability in this area. Um, it seems silly to me to send the money to Harvard. Can I, 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 Following up on what the previous gentleman just said, a scenario of the kids going to community college, then four year college, I've always been curious why you limited it to five years rather than six, because so many of these kids are going to school for six years to get out of college. And second of all, the 100% sliding scale for kids who've gone to every grade, that just seems unrealistic to me. Do you have any numbers on what percentage of current students, 12th graders, have actually been in a Richmond school or lived in Richmond their whole life. And does that include charter schools? Like if they went to K through five with elementary but made middle school charter and then come back to the public high school? Right, we haven't, we, we haven't re, we've requested data from uh, the charter schools that have not yet, uh, we've received one response to the charter schools that are currently uh, high schools in Richmond. So we're working on getting that data and providing it up in order to provide an updated uh, analysis. Uh, for the public. So hopefully you'll have that um, in the near term. Any data on how many kids or 12th graders right now have actually lived in Richmond? Um, that's a really great question. I don't have it offhand, but looking at promised communities throughout the country, this is something that uh, you know, people that have been in the that it is something that is a, a promising practice in order to, in, you're trying to create continuity in education and create um, you know, community and to increase parent involvement. Um, so that is the, the thinking behind it. Um, I think there was a hand over here, and then there's um, a hand here, and then a hand in the back. So one, two, three. Um, I had a question. Um, I know that like uh, a lot, I'm a college counselor at Leadership Public Schools Richmond, and um, I know that for a lot of our students, um, they do have to make the tough choice of, you know, they live at home and commute to go to San Francisco State and or they go to the, lo the local CSUs or they go to community college because they have unmet need and that's a very real thing and I have some students here who can speak about that. Um, so it's very real and let, I mean and so I don't know I don't I don't have any proposal but I do know that um, you know students are like a kid could go to a, a got accepted to a CSU down in in Southern California, but couldn't go there because they couldn't afford to do that. They couldn't pursue their dream of going to Southern California. The other question I have is with uh, a, a student population that ha is um, 
low income, you know, there's a lot of mobility uh, because like they're just having how how do parents be, are able to make rent and so there's a lot of movement and so I just wonder kind of what this gentleman was saying over here, how do you address that? That's like, there's going to be a lot of movement and that's just something that I worry about is like. You might have a, a, a family moving to San Pablo, for example, and then having moved back to Richmond and then moving back just because of their housing instability. So we have two kind of mobilities. One is the, the, the being in school all the way K to 12, but also being a, a Richmond resident. Resident. That's mine. It's all right. Okay, and then um, Pam. Hi, my name is um, Peggy Walker. I was invited here by Janet. Johnson, and I just wanted to introduce myself before I ask my question. I'm the founder of the first business college by a black woman in the Western United States. And I'm also the person that's been behind the scene who wrote the back to work program for this thing. And I work at the State Education Department in Sacramento. So I have, this is just a coincidence that the vision I have for our Bay Area here is, I guess, happening at the same time that the Richmond College is coming out. It's a little different. I have to look like more inside of a retired college instructor as well. But my focus is, these students have worked hard 12 years, and they need to get out of jail car. They may not want to go to Contra Costa College. They may have worked hard, got a or going to, and may decide they want to go to school. I heard Harvard could be Harvard. And of course, you know it's five good money to tip a lot of the schools. And the tuition is going up and up and up and up and up. My vision of what I see, and I've worked with over, I have over 1,100 graduates. The small classrooms that, we, that you see now, I've been seeing for many years, well, I created that also in the vision of working with the state. It had never been heard of. A lot of things had never been heard of. But when you're working with all ages, not just graduates, but adults who also would like to go to school, you get a wider picture of the needs of the people. So I see a thousand dollars up there and like two four thousand two thousand. So we've we've captured the the um, the amount. We, it, it sounds like in general the, the consensus is that that dollar amount is not significant enough. And is is your other comment to include adult students? Is that that's one comment. Okay. And the other is the dollar. I don't know where these dollar amounts came from, mm -hmm. but they are totally unrealistic and unfair to our young people who have spent 12 years okay. trying to get them. Thank you. There's the gentleman in the back. Is the hat on? Sir, you're in the back. Para las, para las personas que no hablan suficiente inglés, ¿se pueden hacer preguntas en español? Claro que sí. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Dígalo en español, yo lo hablo en inglés. Que a las personas que no hablan suficiente inglés y que pueden hacer preguntas en español. For those people that do not speak English. Dígalo. Dígalo. So, la, la pregunta que yo tengo es... My, my question is... Uh, ¿Puede calificar para cualquier universidad Do o tiene que ser específicamente? ¿Do we qualify for any university? Oh. Uh, absolutely. Claro que sí. Yes, yeah, so absolutely, and the, and the promise would be open you know, to, to any student. La promesa es abierta para cualquier estudiante. I just wanted to just again reiterate that this money is for after you get all your grants, all your scholarships. And we have kids actually going to Harvard, Stanford, there's money there. If they get in, there's money there for them. Trust that. 
Uh, we visit, I have a college bound girls group, we take them on college tours. As long as they get in the college, there's none of their forms. So you guys are just covering what's not good. Like I have a, a young lady who went to Holy Names in college. She got all her, everything covered except $5,000. You would probably cover the, right. I guess it was you know, Right, just to clarify, it's not me, but I mean, the promise, right? I love me a million The Richmond Promise. But yes, that, so a requirement, yeah. um, what we, what the proposal is, the requirement is that students must complete their FAFSA or their dream application and use the public aid, the state aid, the federal aid that's available. Because really, we know, it sounds like for many of you here, this amount is not enough. But if a student is applying for financial aid and qualifying, if they're going to a UC and qualifying for you know, $18,000, that's really significant. So it would be a requirement for students to complete their financial aid applications and use the public aid that's available. And then this would be to replace loans or you know any other unmet uh, need that they have. Yeah, but that's a really good point, Now, Thank you for bringing it up. I think it's one, two, three, four. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Don. One, two, three, four, five. Sorry, th thank you again. Uh, I'm not cutting the front. I told her a long time ago, let other people speak before I... Uh, on the amount itself, you know, we all know how expensive college is, but let's look at some of the figures themselves. I just last weekend, I had to buy uh, textbooks for some of the Ivy League Connection students. Yeah, a couple of students, a $225 book, $195 paperback book, you know, $405 textbooks. You know, $1,000 is barely going to cover the books for a year at a community college. Okay, now you got to get a go if you want to stay local. You know, Contra Costa College may be relatively easy to get to, but let's go. You want to go to to Cal State East Bay. It's going to cost you sixty dollars a week in bus and BART just to get there. That's over two thousand dollars a year just to get to college, and you haven't even stepped foot in, into a classroom yet. Uh, you know, with the limited amount of money here, and trust me, this really is a very limited amount of money. We're getting $8 million in the first year, and then it drops off precipitously. By the 10th year, there's only $4 million in the entire community benefits package. How much of that will be designated for the scholarship program? Nobody really knows yet. Half a million? Three quarters of a million? But for all intents and purposes, you need to stop giving out new scholarships after the seventh year, so you still got a little bit of money to take care of those people that you gave the seventh year scholarships too for the eighth, ninth, and tenth year, so that it's a, they're not left out in the cold. You know, just like uh, Michael Parker was saying, you don't want to tease people on this. Nobody is going to go out there and buy a car with just three or one wheel. This is not going to go very far. You don't give them enough money to tease them into thinking that they're going to be able to go and succeed in college. You've got to give them enough resources so that they can succeed. Because even at a community college, if it's not enough money, they're going to start, but then they're going to realize real quick that there isn't enough money for them to continue. And then they drop out. They don't do anything at all. And even at some of the state colleges, it's going to be some, the same way. And like you said, at the, the, uh, the four-year colleges, there's a lot more money involved, especially with the private schools. A report came out two years ago. Uh, Harvard loved it. Said that the kids in the East Bay, it is cheaper to attend Harvard than it is to attend Cal because of the financial aid. You know, Harvard only has a $19 billion endowment. For the entire University of California system, it is only three and a half billion dollars. Not very much money to be giving it, given out. But most of our kids are going to be going to the UCs, uh, if Cal, Cal or UCLA uh, in particular. There's virtually no money to be able to offer them at the UCs. So they're going to be depending upon resources like this. And if it's not going to be able to go very far, it's just teasing them. We need to be able to, to help the ones that we can help. And on the, the sliding scale issue, yeah, where you've got to go for all 13 years to get the full 100%. I could have heard, sworn I heard the, our city manager talk about how uh, we're doing everything we can to include people. This sounds like we're finding ways to exclude people on this, and it, I, I just have to disagree with that. I see, if I happen to, my family moves in here, uh, in, in the, I'm in the 10th grade, as I'm breathing the same air that everybody else is from Chevron, this is what, what this is all about, the mitigation factors, but I get no scholarship money at all. I'm not even eligible for that. Uh, and even in one of those years, I decide to, uh, to take off and attend a charter school or attend Salesians or something like that. That knocks me out of the bag. Yeah. I think you need some adjustments. Okay. We um, are supposed to be going to the next session soon. So if the last four people, if you can make your comments, uh, if you want to read. Yes, ma'am? I'm curious. How many, what are the projected figures? How many students per year do you project to be awarding? 
Anyway, I don't think I've seen that number. Yes, we're trying to finalize uh, that we're waiting for some information regarding uh, charter school uh, enrollment rates mm -hmm. and projected enrollment rates. And so we are hopefully going to get that data soon and we'll be able to finalize the, the projections. And you don't have an if this, then that right now? Um, we, it's just very there's, rough. There's yeah. so many different factors that go into it that it is it's pretty complex. <coughs> um, so hopefully that will, that will come soon to have a better picture. And just one more comment. I certainly understand Mike Parker's concern about um, wanting each individual student to get enough money to make it meaningful, but somehow about limiting it to community college attendance. And I'm very much in favor of community colleges. I was in Los Angeles City College student who saw on the wall a sign one day, is money the only thing keeping you out of UCLA? Yeah, ha uh ha, -huh, go to this meeting. And then I got in on a low-income minority scholarship program and graduated UCLA, but my thing, so I'm very pro-community college, but to me to limit it seems to take away from the spirit of what I would think most parents see as the promise. Um, given how much dialogue has been happening with regards to like feeling like, wow, this is just a very small amount of money, what has been the talk about increasing the money? Like, like, has there been any talk like, oh, well, we want like, what, what's the what's the long term plan? Like, we're trying to say like, okay, in these ten years we have this much money, but okay, as we are very quickly finding out, that's not a lot of money. So, what's is there any talk or any kind of conversation about how are we going to help? So there, there was one slide um, that Mr. Lindsay showed in there saying um, you know, that, that $35 million investment, and really we think we need $150 million um, to make this you know, something that, that lasts. Um, and that's certainly going to be, I'm sure, the, um, you know, as the city council decides on the final promise, the job of whoever you know, is leading the effort there is fundraising and, and continuing to grow that pot of money because, yes, $35 million. Um, is not going to take us. And I think we just have a few more comments, if you could. The question is, I have a student that has just arrived from El Salvador. If there is an opportunity to continue to study here, and if, if she qualify for, for this help. Okay. So then the, the, the question would be um, for students who have recently arrived um, in the schools here, um, would they be eligible? That's the question? Right. Yes. Okay. So we're going to put that down because that's a good one. Yeah, and can we go ahead and if you have a comment, um, can you write down your question? You need to go ahead and break this question from us. And if you want to give us your comments on the comment card or come speak to us individually, you can also, you can also write your comment over here where it says Group C. And if you'd like, you can also stay in this group, but we just want to give people who want to move an opportunity to move and to join the group. Thank you for being here. Pardon me? Um, we're going to continue the same group here.